All right, guys, so um, so we're going to go over tax deductions um, today, or tonight, so, <laughs> but um, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about what can you claim uh, on taxes as far as deductions and everything, so uh, I've done a video here, I don't know, it was a couple years ago on this subject, but uh, but I'm wanting to do an updated uh, version, and because uh, I've, because uh, over that time I've learned a lot. And, um, and most of this stuff, I actually, you know, went over with my personal CPA attorney, which he's very good. And, um, you know, whenever you're doing your taxes in this line of work, uh, whenever you're a contractor or, or an owner operator or, or whatever, then guys, your goal is, is to get your, uh, basically your adjusted gross income down to as close to zero as you can so that way that's less money that you have to pay the government but so uh, of course like whenever save your lease on um, you know like with me uh, transporting RVs and campers and stuff so uh, so at the end of the year we'll get a 1099 and uh, so that's going to show the gross amount that that you made well as a contractor then you're responsible for all of your expenses you're responsible for fuel you're exp you're responsible for uh, maintenance on your truck truck repairs you're responsible for everything so so all those things are are tax deductible and uh so that's what we're going to go over today and uh, so, like I said, your the best thing is, I mean, save all your receipts. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that I think you're required to hang on to those receipts for I think six years. I believe uh, six or seven years. So, so like I said, hang on to your receipts. Um, I know some of them fade and stuff like that over time. Um, maybe take a picture of them and put them in a file on your computer somewhere and um, and then uh, but you also need to hang on to the original uh, receipts as well so um, but uh, so we're gonna go over these uh, tax deductions and everything like that so but um, the biggest one of course in in our line of work as far as you know RV transport and um, hot shot uh, your uh, I mean even trucking uh, if you're leased on with a company your owner operator I mean all I mean all this stuff applies no matter what you're in I mean it, of course it applies no matter what business you're in but as far as us then then this is what I'm gonna go over as far as RV transport but like I said fuel fuel is gonna be your biggest expense uh, out here on the road um, so of course, most of us we get a fuel discount with the if we're leased on with a pretty good sized company. Um, what I do is I save that receipt, and that's the amount that I put down for my tax deduction is whatever's on that receipt, uh, which is going to be the higher amount. So hang on to that receipt. And guys, I also use a, a, a software. It's a free software that I use whenever I was doing uh, lawn care. And, but it's called yard books. I put everything into that software and then at the end of the year, I mean, I print it out and, um, and I give it to my, my CPA attorney. I don't, I don't even give him the, my receipts. Um, now again, I hang on to my receipts in case I was to ever be audited or anything like that. But I mean, he knows how I keep up with stuff. Uh, I'm very prepared. I'm very organized uh, whenever it comes to that stuff. So, um, so he trusts me. I trust him, and um, so I, you know, I put everything just on a spread, or like on that. It basically sort of prints it off in like a spreadsheet. But so, um, so fuel um, repairs, repairs that you do on your truck, uh, anything. I mean. Um, you replace a motor, you replace a transmission, um, like I'm having to go through, uh, 
guys, this right here, this year hit me hard. So I'm probably going to be in the hole uh, this year. I'm probably going to be in the negative uh, to where it basically shows I lost money. And, uh, and I believe you can do that up to, I think it's four or five years that you can claim in the hole. And then, then you have to basically start showing some kind of profit or otherwise they'll, uh, basically come in and audit you and, and, you know, uh, I guess, uh, potentially can shut your business down if they show that you're not making a profit. So, um, but like me, uh, I mean, I'm fixing to be out close to $10,000, uh, for my CP, uh, four pump, uh, coming apart. So anything like that, uh, you know, um, you change the alternator, uh, you change a belt, um, the, I mean, your thermostats, uh, radiator, anything, anything, ball joints, hubs, uh, tie rod ends, any kind of repairs that you've done on that truck, uh, windshield, windshield wipers, anything like that, that's a repair. You replace the light bulb, that's a repair. So save all those receipts. I can't stress that enough, guys. Anything that you use for your business, anything you use for your truck, anything that's, that's, that that uh, goes along with that business, save that receipt, and it will be tax deductible. So, uh, but I also want to clarify, guys, that, I mean, I am no CPA attorney. Um, I'm just giving you um, what I've learned over the years of being in business for myself between RV transport and also um, uh, having my own lawn care business for five years. And so this, these are the things that I've learned. And uh, some of them, I guess you can say, are, I guess you can say loopholes. I don't know. But, um, but I mean, if you was to go on, online and everything, you'll see all these stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's legal. So I'm not I'm not out here to try to uh, try to get you to do something legal. I'm not. So, but if you if you have any questions on it, if uh, you feel like that that I don't know about that and stuff like that, go go find you a CPA attorney, and and find one that knows the trucking industry, the transportation industry. Don't go out here to you know H and R Block or or uh, anything like that. Go find you a good CPA accountant that that knows the trucking industry. So, but um, so I mean that there are things on repairs, maintenance, uh, your oil change, whether or not you take it somewhere and have somebody else do it, or whether or not you do it yourself. Um, so your oil, your filters, grease, uh, fuel additive, uh, things like that, transmission fluid. Uh, brake fluid, uh, power steering fluid, um, your coolant, anything like that, say the receipts on it. Now, I did ask um, my CPA attorney one time that, so if you take your truck somewhere and, and you pay them to do the oil change, well, obviously you're paying for the oil, the filters and stuff like that, and you're also paying them uh, for their time and labor. So I asked him, I said, well, can I not pay myself for my time and my labor? And um, pretty much no. Um, now, if if I had my own business, as far as that goes, like a repair shop or things like that, then, then yes, I could basically um, pay my other business uh, for that, uh, you know, like that for my time and labor. But... Being that I'm just personally doing it on my own, unfortunately, no, you cannot uh, uh, claim your time and labor. Uh, some people may argue that point with me, but that's coming from from a CPA attorney. Um, so, uh, like I say, anything you do as far as repairs, maintenance, anything like that. Uh, tires. Tires is another big expense. Um, so the cost of your tires. Uh, Whenever you take them, have them rotated. Um, if you get a nail in that tire and you have to go have that, uh, have it patched or plugged or whatever, uh, save those receipts and uh, those are tax deductions. Um, 
bank fees. Uh, say if um, say if you have a bank fee and say they take out uh, ten dollars a month or whatever like that, or uh, like com data fee, uh, EFS uh, fee, uh, whatever kind of uh, card you use, those bank fees are are uh, tax deductible. You know, like we uh, where I'm leased on to, we use com data. Well. Every time you use that card, then uh, then they charge a two dollar fee. Uh, two dollars may not sound much, but in the end, over a year's time, guys, that adds up. So I mean, put that down. That's a tax deduction. It's a bank fee. Um, for RV transport, we got the pull-in fees that we have to pay. That's a tax deduction. So. Um, tolls and permits. Now, granted, most of your permits they're uh, they're going to be reimbursed by the company that you're leased on with, more than likely. Uh, if they're not, then you can claim as a tax deduction. If you do get uh, reimbursed for those permits or or tolls, then uh, then you cannot claim that as a tax deduction because your company is claiming it as a tax deduction. So you can't. You can't do it twice. Um, as far as tolls go, uh, most companies, whenever you're hooked to that camper, they're going to reimburse you for the tolls. Now, you'll have to pay for it out of pocket, but whenever you get done with that trip, you turn all your receipts in, they will reimburse you. Now, as far as like whenever you're on your way back to pick up your next load and you're empty, and if you go across the toll road, then more than likely they don't reimburse you for that. So save those toll receipts and then you can claim that part as a tax deduction. Um, if, say you're uh, pulling to a truck stop and uh, of course, most of you know, most of these truck stops are going to paid parking now. So if you have to pay to park somewhere overnight, save that receipt, that's a tax deduction. Um, truck wash um, guys I have two types of truck washes I pay an annual fee uh, or not an annual fee but a monthly pay, uh, fee yeah. um, it's $15 a month uh, whenever I'm home that's what I use to you know get my uh, truck wash to the local uh, basically drive through car wash uh, when I'm out on the road then um, and my truck needs washed then I use, usually use Blue Beacon. So um, save those receipts, even though, even the monthly one, um, save those receipts. Um, your licenses, as far as your driver's license, whenever you go to renew it, um, the, uh, whenever you go to renew your tag, uh, anything like that, uh, save those receipts. That's a tax deduction because you have to have your commercial driver's license in order to do your business, right? So a lot of people don't think about that. A lot of people don't think about your, your driver's license, but you've got to have your driver's license in order to do your business. So that's tax deduction. Um, whenever, you know, every two years or if you're in a little bit worse health, you got to do it more frequently, but... Uh, your DOT physical. You have to have that DOT physical in order to do your job. So that's a tax deduction. Uh, your DOT inspection on your truck. Tax deduction. Uh, materials and supplies such as things that you're going to need for your truck. Uh, such as um, to make it you know, DOT compliant. You got to have triangles. You got to have fire extinguisher. You got to have fuses. Um, things like that. So that's a tax deduction, guys. Um, the let's see what else. Uh, your bed that you use in the in the back of your uh, truck to sleep in. Uh, and I'll and I'm gonna be making an, uh, another video on that as far as uh, can you sleep in your truck. Um, there's a lot of controversy on that. So. Um, so your bed, 
your mattress or your memory foam mattress or your uh, or your air mattress, whatever you use for your mattress, uh, the lumber that you use to build that bed, or, or whether it's you know wood or whether it's metal or or whatever it is, the material you use to build that bed, then that's a tax deduction. Uh, if you go out here and get a, an actual DOT approved sleeper kit to you know take out the door panels and all that stuff and put that in there. That's a tax deduction, so that's for your business. Um, rentals, say if your truck breaks down and you have to go out here and, and uh, which is highly unlikely, but I mean I know Inter Enterprise offers some trucks, but but if you have to go out here and do a rental, that's a tax deduction. Uh, labor and outside services, so if you have to go out here and pay somebody else to do something. Uh, uh, say if if you want to go out here and pay somebody to to build a bed in the back of your truck, uh, the or or whatever, that's a tax deduction. Um, your accounting fees. Whenever you go uh, at the end of the year when you file your taxes, the money that you have to pay the accountant, um, that's a tax deduction. Um, advertising. Your placards that you have to buy whether you get the ones that you put in the the on the side of the back glass or whether you get the magnetics or whether you get stickers and put them on um yes i mean that's advertising that's uh, basically showing everybody around you and the general public and dot and everybody else that i mean that that's your company name or whoever you're leased on with and dot number and all that mess so um so that's advertising if you have your own business say if you uh, you're not leased on with somebody you run under your own authority and stuff like that anything that you use to uh, to advertise that business business cards um, you know if um, you put out an ad or something pay for an ad on Facebook or, or anything like that um, that's advertising so you're advertising your business so it's tax deduction um guys some of these are and this is i'm st still a little bit confused on, on a, a couple of these right here so um i still really don't understand it even though my cpa has explained it to me but so i would definitely you know go and talk to the cpa and, and find out about uh, the next couple of things i'm on a uh, list but uh, as far as truck depreciation, I've heard you can either claim the entire amount of that vehicle up front and you can only do it for one year or you can claim the depreciation of that vehicle over several years. Uh, same thing goes with one that I'm going to get down here in a minute. But as far as uh, electronics, um, here I'll just actually go ahead and do it right now. Let me scroll on down. So, electronics. Uh, if you have a CB radio, which I highly recommend. Nobody uses CB radios no more. Guys, CB radios can, can save so many wrecks out there on the highway. But nobody uses them no more. So, uh, CB radio, anything like that, electronics, you can either claim the full amount up front or you can claim the depreciation over a, a few years uh, a GPS dash cam um, your phone um, your tablet that you use to run your law books on uh, or your map or whatever like that guys that's a tax deduction that's for your you're using that for your business um, as far as your phone goes then yes, I mean, most of us, we only have one phone. So we use it for personal and business. So what I do is, for the most part, I mean, I basically claim half of my phone bill. Uh, the cost of my phone, you know, I claim half of it. Because pretty much half of it is going towards my business. So if you have, say, go ahead and buy a phone specifically for your business, then you can claim the full amount. Um, headset, wear a headset, which, um, 
by DOT reg, uh, laws and stuff, uh, you have to have a hands-free uh, device on whenever you, if you're on the phone. So, uh, so headset. Um, computer, like a laptop, whatever. Uh, printer. Uh, edge gauge. Uh, if you got something like that in your in your vehicle, uh, scan tools, um, phone holder like yeah, let's see. If I can get it right here. They so like a ram mount that right there. They uh, you just put your phone in there, and I mean they make them big enough for tablets or iPad or whatever you got. So. Well, um, that's tax deduction. The, da, 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 let's see here. All right, so let me go back up here where I was at. Um, advertising truck depreciation. Okay. Uh, dues and subscriptions. If you pay any kind of subscription fees each month, um, a lot of people may not think about this. But, like, if you pay subscription, say, on, um, like, iHeartRadio or, or Pandora or whatever, all the other stuff's out there, Spotify, um, guys, I listen to music going down the road, so, um, in my truck, so, I mean, we're, we're in our vehicles, I mean, 99% of the time during the week, so, um, so, yeah. Uh, Amazon uh, subscription, you pay you pay a fee for that each month or, or every year. Um, your insurance that you pay on your vehicle, it's tax deduction. Legal expenses, um, I think I went through that whenever I was talking about the attorney or whatever, but uh, but yeah, legal expenses. Uh, whenever you go file your taxes, um, if you pay an attorney, you know, retain an attorney to, to basically keep him on file all the time, uh, specifically whenever you are, so whenever you need him, then that's a tax deduction. Um, most people don't use this anymore with today's technology, but uh, postage, if you have to mail something somewhere, you know, the, the cost of whatever the postage is, tax deduction. Um... Your phone and internet. So I went over that just a while ago. So um, I mean, if you use it for both personal and business, then you can claim half of it. Uh, property rentals. So if you rent, say, a shop or an office space or something like that for your business, then that's a tax deduction. Um, if you and this goes back to like the truck depreciation stuff like that. But if say if you was like to build a your own shop or your own office, then um, I still ain't really figured out how that works. But um, but you can claim I, I don't I guess you can claim it all up front one year, or you can claim the depreciation or something like that. Um, but you know as far as I guess paying rent to yourself. Uh, that goes back to the, uh, you know, doing like your oil changes yourself. Uh, you can't really do that. So, um, unless you're like you're, you got a separate business and that, you know, that uh, shop or that office is in your other business's name. And then, of course, so this business will pay, you know, that business so you can claim it as a tax deduction. Well, then that business is going to, I mean, it's going to end up to where you're not going to be able to claim it as a deduction. So, but, but yeah, if you pay somebody else for property rental, stuff like that, office space, a shop, then, uh, then yeah, that's so a, a uh, tax deduction. If you go rent a shop for today, for, for a day, like a shop space, um, save that receipt. That's a tax deduction. Um, tools. Um, you know, sockets, um, uh, ranches, oil filter ranches, any kind of tool that you use to work on your truck, they, 
any kind of tool that can be used to work on your truck. You get what I'm saying? So, can be a tax deduction. Um, other things that can be, you know, that is considered tools, uh, you know, other than, you know, like my big old Milwaukee impact uh, that I got. Um, the uh, little, like your Milwaukee ratchet. Um, my uh, my auto gen jump box. Uh, my Milwaukee tire inflator. Uh, all that stuff that's, that's considered tools that's used for my business or can be used for my business. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, if you got a pressure washer, so sometimes you got to, you know, sometimes you want to wash your truck at home or maybe sometimes you want to uh, wash parts on the truck that can't be washed at the car wash, such as your uh, engine bay and stuff like that. So, a uh, pressure washer. Then, uh, if you got a welder, um, sometimes you have to, you know, uh, make repairs or fix things on the truck. So, your welder, uh, a jack, uh, oil pans, air compressor, um, uh, like I said, guys, anything that, that you use as far as doing maintenance, repairs, anything on that truck, as far as tools, claim it as a tax deduction. Um, this one goes back to like your property rentals and stuff like that, but utilities. Um, if you rent a shop, rent an office, then the utilities that you pay on that shop or office is considered a tax deduction. The... Uh, a home office. A lot of people don't don't know about this. Don't think about this. But like inside my home, this bedroom right here is my office space. All you need is a desk and a filing cabinet and a computer, a laptop, whatever. That's all you need in order to consider that an office. So, um, and basically the way it works is you got to take the square footage of your house and then you take the square footage of that room and basically, I guess, you subtract it, divide it up, I don't know, and then say if, um, say if your house payment is, say, $1,000 a month and 10% of that, of, of your, of the square footage of that house is your office space then you can take 10 percent of the what you pay for your mortgage and claim that as your home office so that's a tax deduction and like i said all you need is a desk a filing cabinet a computer that's all you need um but you know like mine i mean yeah, I got it fixed up. Now, you know, some of the things, you know, like pictures and all that stuff, no, you can't really claim that. Um, now, you can get, you know, some decorative uh, things like stuff to hang on the wall and, you know, make it presentable looking. Then, yes, you can claim as a tax deduction. But for the most part, just regular old pictures and stuff, no. Um, as far as, like, if uh, you had to do some repairs or build, you know, that office as far as painting. Um, if you had to fix a wall or anything like that, then the materials you used uh, to fix that office up, then yes, if you had to put down new carpet or new flooring, then yes, that's a that's a tax deduction. Um, uh, blinds, curtains, anything like that that you have to that you would use in that office area. And don't go out here and you know buy. Uh, you know, curtains and, and blinds and stuff for every uh, single window in your house and expect to use that as tax deduction. No. Because uh, if they come back and audit you, then if you got 20 blinds and 20 sets of curtains and you only got one window in that office space, then <laughs> that ain't going to look too good. So, uh, da, 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 da. here's a good one. Meetings. Driver's meeting. Um, a lot of people don't think about this, guys. So, uh, I don't think you can claim the entire amount of, say, say, if you go out to eat 
somewhere and um the i don't think you can claim the entire amount but i think you can claim 50 percent uh, of it so say if say if you go out and go out to eat with somebody and say you're um uh, maybe talking to, to them about maybe wanting to get into RV transport or something like that, then um, you can claim that as a meeting. Uh, now, you can't go out here and have a meeting every single day, but, you know, I mean, you can have one, you know, once a week, uh, once a month, whatever. Um, but, I mean, you go out here with a buddy, and, you know, you sit there and try to, you know, get him into doing rv transport or you know something like that and you know that's a business meeting so it's a driver's meeting um you know like whenever a couple of us run across country like going out to california then um you know one of us may sit down one day and uh whenever we all sit down together and eat then uh, one person may pay for everybody's meal and well, we were sitting there, you know, talking about RV transport, discussing business and uh, complaining and uh, talking about things that could be uh, changes that could be made and all that kind of stuff. That's a driver's meeting. So you can claim that as a meeting. Um, then also say like if you have uh, maybe invite, um, you know, uh, some fellow workers, drivers, or whatever, uh, you know, invite them over and have a big cookout or something. Well, the money that you spent on that cookout, hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever, then uh, that's a meeting. So, um, uh, let's see. This one I'm going to try to save for last. Um, da -da -da -da. Going back to, like, your subscriptions, like Amazon. Well, you know, a lot of people buy things off Amazon. So, and then a lot of people forget, you know, to save those receipts or go back and print them off. Well, if you order like tools, gloves, um, anything for your business, office supplies, anything like that, do not forget about that stuff you bought on Amazon. Uh, because I guarantee you, it, it, it adds up. And I guarantee you, people, they forget about it. Um, you buy something on eBay for your truck or whatever. Print that receipt off and save it. Um, office supplies, pens, paper, uh, notebooks, binders, folders, ink for your printer, uh, a desk, filing cabinet. You know, going back, paint material, uh to do the office, uh, blinds, curtains, you know, things like that. Um, that's a tax deduction. Um, you know, a stapler, the staples you got to put in the stapler. You know, some things, you know, like I said, it may just be, you know, a dollar here, a dollar there, but guys, that dollar here and dollar there, that adds up to a lot of dollars at the end of the year. So don't just think, well, oh, it's only a dollar and just throw that receipt away. No, save that receipt. Um, here's another good one, uh, uniforms, um, uh, I tell my son all the time that, uh, he goes out here and buys a new pair of boots or gloves, give me the receipt, <laughs> I'm not telling you to do that, they, but, I mean, if you go out here and buy a pair of boots for work, uh, now very, you know, nice pair of fancy alligator, uh, snake skin boots or whatever like that. No, I don't think so. But, you know, if they're work boots, you know, steel toe boots, something like that, then yes, uh, that's considered part of uniform. Uh, gloves, um, coveralls uh, for like if you're working on your uh, your vehicle or like winter coveralls, uh, stuff like that. Um, cleats that you put on that you put on the bottom of your boots or your shoes to, you know, walk around in the in the ice and stuff. That's a tax deduction. Now, here's one as far as uniforms goes that 
uh, sort of a controversy subject and um, I don't know it can be it can go either way now but this is coming from my CPA attorney but I mean for the most part you know truck drivers I mean we're walking around in here in uh, blue jeans and a t-shirt so that's pretty much mostly what we wear well technically that's our uniform so I mean even though it may not be the same thing every single day but I mean we're self-employed we're contractors so technically that's our uniform but uh, I guess the IRS and the government they don't see it that way so uh, technically a pair of blue jeans is not considered a uh, a uniform now if you had like uh, like work pants like dickies or, or something like that then yes that's considered a, a uniform if you had a shirt with like your company name and logo on it that's considered a uniform um but you know uh, other things like i mean of course you got to wear socks and underwear every day but that's not considered part of your uniform so sorry but um but yeah all right so here's the big one and this one's another one that a lot of people do not think about per diem I'm trying to make this video as quick as I can. So, uh, per diem basically covers uh, meals, hotels, showers, laundry, things of that nature. Things that you would have to, that you know, the luxuries, things that you would get home or here at home, taking a shower, washing your clothes, sleeping in your own bed, uh, eating your food and stuff at home, then obviously you can't do that here so you have to do it uh, wherever you're at so that's considered part of your per diem the uh, I've seen people out here and and as long as they're getting away with it then more power to them and, but and some people will tell you that yes you can do this well I'm here to tell you no you cannot and if you want to sit here and argue with me then go right ahead I don't care uh, I'm probably not going to respond to it because I know I'm right. But you cannot claim meals. You cannot save the receipt for your meals or the money that you go to the grocery store and stock your cooler up and take it on the road with you and uh, claim hotel expenses and showers and, and stuff like that and claim per diem. You can't do it. You can either do one or the other, uh, if you want to. Which I think they're going to probably come back and do per diem, but because that's that's just the way it works. Because like meals, you can only claim I think like half. So uh, some people's going to say you can claim all of it. No, you cannot. Um, but that's what all per diem covers. So um, a lot of people say hang on to your hotel receipts and stuff like that. You claim it as a deduction. Well. Yes, but it's, like I said, it's included in your per diem pay. But you still need to hang on to those receipts. And whenever you go to McDonald's or wherever, hang on to that receipt. Because, guys, and and also going along with your law book, them receipts and stuff are going to show that you was out of town. Because in order to get per diem, you have to be, I think it's, I can't remember how many miles it is, but... um. But you have to be so many miles away from home, and you have to be gone overnight in order to get per diem for that day. So, um, the way that per diem works is, let me get me a drink. So, for every day that you're away from home, now, if you get home, say, at, uh, at 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, then no, or even, you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon. That day does not count. Sorry, but it does not count. You have to be gone a full day and overnight. 
in order to get for them. So, um, and I will leave a link in the description to where I got this information from. But it comes from uh, ksmcpa.com is where I got this information from. And it's basically uh, from the IRS. Effective October the 1st, 2024, the transportation industry per diem rates will increase to $80 a day. Currently, it is $69. So, for, for 2024, it's, it's $69 a day. Uh, for any locality of travel within the continental U.S., and it's currently $74 for travel outside the continental U.S. So if you go to Canada or somewhere like that, then keep up with that. Because, you know, as long as you're in the continental United States, it's $69. If you cross into Canada and spend a whole day over there, then it's, 75, it's $74 for that day. Now, once you cross back in the United States, then it goes back to $69. Um... But as of October the 1st, 2024, and I'm not sure if from October 1st to the end of the year, I don't know if it's the new one or if this is just talking about the new fiscal year. But, um, but it goes up to $86 outside the continental U.S. Um, of this amount, 80% of that amount each day is deductible for federal income tax purposes. So that's what it says. And like I said, I will leave a link in the description uh, to take you to this. Um, and then there's another way that you can claim per diem, um, which in our industry, transportation industry, I do not recommend. Uh, but you can claim mileage or you can claim actual expenses. I highly, highly, highly recommend you to claim actual expenses expenses um, in the transportation industry. Um, the mileage per diem rate is 67 cents per mile. Um, now, if you was out here doing Uber or, you know, uh, DoorDash or, or anything like that, delivering, you know, parts or whatever around town and in your little Prius or something like that, then yeah, I would highly recommend you claiming mileage. But whenever you're out here driving around, you know, 18 wheeler or, a, you know, a, a big old dually and stuff like that, no. Uh, you can figure it up yourself, and I'm going to, I guarantee you, you're going to come out better if you claim actual expenses. Because, uh, like I said, guys, fuel alone, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know a T. The, uh, Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm going to figure something up. All right, guys, so I just sat down. I just went back and figured up some stuff. So they, so I'm also looking at my my little yard books uh, software thing that I told you that I'd use. So, so far this year, and uh, no, it's not that many miles because, I mean, this is, what, October the 10th? and or october 11th i think and um uh, i've pretty much been you know for the most part out of work as far as transporting uh since july 15th that's when my truck broke down um so um so this is pretty much from from january 1st through july the 15th and for me it's pretty much you know running part-time-ish so if you run full-time Yours is going to be more. If you run part-time, yours may be a little bit less. So, but so far this year, uh, I have run 44,725 miles. So, at 67 cents per mile, then that comes out to $29,965.75 that I could use towards the deduction, my tax deduction, if I claimed mileage. Alright, so as far as actual expense, and guys, you know, some of this stuff has not even been included yet. 
uh, you know, as far as my per diem, my per diem hasn't been included yet. Um, you know, um, my cell phone bill, my internet bill, um, you know, things like that. Um, my home office, my utilities, a lot of that stuff hasn't been included in this yet. And then a big one that hasn't been included in this yet is um, my catastrophic breakdown repair that I'm fixing to have. Now, granted, everybody's not going to have that, you know, every year. And um, but this year I did. And that's going to be about a $10,000 uh, deduction that I'm going to have uh, as far as this goes but as of right now I've had a total of $32,651.16 uh, that basically I have for tax deductions so far again it's not including phone bill uh, home office you know things like that um, guys I have I have spent $16,961.25 in fuel. Now, granted, that's not exactly what I spent, but that's what the receipt shows. So, um, but yeah. So, I mean, you can tell right there. So, $32,000, you know, time I add all the other stuff up, you know, the... And guys, I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean, I know it sounds like a big number, and it is, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean it, that's exactly what I spent this year. You know, a lot of that stuff, a lot of it's per diem, because uh, I do have a little bit of per diem in here. Um, the, you know, some things like, um, I'm trying to think of something. Um... Where is something in here? Da, da, da. Like the bank charges. Uh, you know, I may already have that anyway. Um, like, like this home office. I'm not really paying anything because I, I live here anyway. But I can claim a percentage of that for my business. And uh, so therefore, it's a deduction. That gets my adjusted gross income down as close to zero as I can get it. But on top of that, you know, at 32000 I just said, guys, that's fixing to jump up another $10,000 hopefully next week. Uh, I say hopefully like that's a good thing as far as spending that much money, but I'm saying hopefully because I'm ready to get my truck back after a breakdown. So, uh, but yeah. So obviously you can see in this line of work, actual expense cost is going to outdo your your mileage um but if you don't agree with me or or if you would like to you know sit down and figure up and see which one's better before you file your taxes be sure to do it before then sit down and figure up all your receipts and then sit down and figure up your mileage versus the mileage see which one comes out better now, I mean, mileage, if you didn't have that much expense that this uh, that year, then yeah, mileage may work better. But remember, and this is the reason I don't do mileage. I always do actual expense. Because say if you have a great year and mileage turns out to be more of a deduction this year. Well, next year you have a catastrophic breakdown and you're having to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a new motor, then now you just spent way more than uh, than what you would have spent on mileage. And that's where the problem comes in, and a lot of people don't realize that once you claim one, you can't go and do the other. So you can't do mileage one year. And then the next year, do actual expense. Whichever one you start with, that's the one you have to stay with. Um, if your CPA attorneys, or if you're doing it on your own or whatever like that, you're messing up. I promise you. Uh, again, you can sit here and argue with me if you want to, but you're wrong. You're messing up. Sorry. but uh, And if your attorney's telling you 
different, I'm telling you, he's wrong. Um, Google it. <laughs> it tells you right on the internet that you can't do it uh, through the IRS. So you can only do one or the other. So you can't do mileage one year and actual expense the next year. Um, whichever one you choose starting off with your business, that's the one you have to stick with from then on out. So choose wisely. Uh, da, da, da. I'm trying to think. I believe that's everything. Uh, I know I've missed something. And guys, if y'all can think of anything else that you can claim as a tax deduction to help somebody out, maybe help me out, maybe something I didn't know. I don't know. Uh, leave it in the comments and let me know. Uh, that way, let everybody else know. So, I'm sorry this video took so long, but I mean, I tried. Of course, I know a lot of it was me rambling like I'm doing right now, but um, but I was trying to get everything in there. And like I said, I know I missed some things uh, probably. And um, but like I said, a lot of these things that I mentioned, a lot of people don't even think of. So. And that's what I wanted to do is get on here and do an in-depth video as far as tax deductions. Again, I am no CPA attorney. I highly recommend you going and getting advice from a CPA attorney uh, that, uh, that is knowledgeable in the transportation and trucking industry. So, guys, don't go out here and put down something or, or do something illegal and then come back and say, well, hey, Simplify Transport said I could do it this way. Nope, you do it at your own risk. I'm telling you right now, I'm not a CPA attorney. So, and I do not represent you or anything like that. I'm just giving you advice of how I do it. So, but anyway, guys, if y'all enjoyed this video, uh, please, please, please like, share, subscribe. It really helps me out. Uh, leave me a comment. Hit that bell notification for uh, for more upcoming videos um, for RV transport and um, and maybe things I just do around here at the land. Uh, maybe sometimes just getting on here, just talking and ranting. I don't know, but uh, but if y'all enjoy this type these types of videos, uh, just like I said, uh, like, share, subscribe, and I guess that's it for this one. So as always, y'all be safe. Simplify.